A Lesser Narcissist in Action? Hello, I'm H.G. Tudor. I've invited you to watch some video footage and then determine whether you see any narcissists in the material that you've watched, and if so, why, and if you'd categorize any of them as lesser narcissists, being lower lesser, middle lesser, upper lesser A, or upper lesser B, as an opportunity to extend your knowledge of my work. Let's have the video footage again, so you can watch it once more and formulate your views. And then we'll see it again as I provide you with my observations and analysis. Okay, you've seen the footage. Now we'll go through it. So the individual concerned is being pulled over, and we know that this is for an alleged speeding violation. Now, first to note, we have no evidence to support whether he was speeding or not. So this could raise the potential that is the police officer bent and that they are sought to pin something on him. But we have no evidence either way, and we would assume that she's not. The fact that he's assumed to be speeding suggests a lack of accountability for behaviour by engaging in a potential criminal act. Of course, there might be a good explanation for this. It might be that he urgently has to get somewhere. He's unwell or there's an emergency at home, and that would explain that behaviour. The police officer approaches the vehicle and starts talking with him, telling him that he was speeding at 57 in the 45 zone. And she invites him to produce his driver's license. Ordinarily, of course, in the United States, one remains in the car with your hands where they can be seen at the risk of obviously provoking the police officer, which could lead to an escalation. He doesn't do this. He immediately leaves the vehicle, which does show a sense of entitlement and lack of accountability. He explains that he's just simply getting his driver's license. But he could have said to her, could I leave the vehicle? Could I get out and get the driver's license and point to where it is? She then tells him to go to the curbside and he complies and she invites him to sit down. At this point, he loses it. And there's an ignition of what looks like anger or fury as he says that he's not going to sit down. There's a bit of pushing and shoving, and she's warning him about being tasered and telling him that he should back off. She then gives him a shove, and that prompts him then to start grappling with her. Now, the shove, of course, might be a threat to control, as was the fact that she was telling him to sit down. Or... It could be that he's just having a bad day of things. In comes Man in Blue, semi-rugby tackles him, and the wrestling man is brought under control. He, of course, is still trying to resist as the police officer is trying to move his arms around and the Man in Blue helps. Other bystanders, other drivers, rather, have pulled over. Some just rubbernecking. A gentleman with a baseball cap leaps in to get hold of the legs and two other people come in to help restrain as another police officer arrives. The fact is that in the interaction, when she told him to sit down, he reacted almost immediately. And this might have been viewed as a threat to control. The fact that he responded so almost verbally violently, not saying, I don't want to sit down, or I'm all right standing, thank you very much, but immediately, I'm not sitting and shouting at her and jabbing his finger. Then man backs off, and then he says, I'm not sitting, motherfucker, swearing at her, using profanity. This just so a sense of entitlement, a potential ignition of fury. He's told, of course, to put his hands behind his back, or that he'll be tasered. He doesn't comply, which again shows a lack of accountability. She tells him to touch the vehicle, and put your hands on the fucking vehicle now, she swears, escalating the situation with him. He won't comply, which again shows a lack of accountability for the behaviours, shows a sense of entitlement to do what he wants. She then shoves him, which could also be perceived as a further threat to control, which then results in the physical grappling that goes on. And when the man in blue wrestles him to ground, he can be heard saying son of a bitch to her. Verbal insult. He continues to resist despite two other people trying to help out. He continues to struggle. Another officer comes and she tells him, you don't do that to a woman. You don't do that even to a cop. You understand me. Eventually, he's subdued and is walked to the car. What we see there are, of course, a number of narcissistic indicators. But can we say that this man is a narcissist? The short answer is no. Why? We don't have sufficient material. We're just seeing roughly three, and, three minutes and 30 seconds of his life. The way that he reacts 
is certainly not commensurate with somebody who ordinarily exhibits emotional empathy, but we don't know the backstory here. This individual could be suffering from an external stressor. He might have lost his job. It might be that he's going through a difficult divorce. He might have a child that's very unwell. We simply don't know. And we would need to look at the extenuating circumstances surrounding this, but also more of this person's life to make a guaranteed determination as to what he is. So the important lesson, first of all, from this is that in order to make a valid determination, we have to look at a wealth of material and evidence from a variety of different sources about the person who's being scrutinized for the purpose of making a valid determination. That is hugely important. Here, we do see various instances which are narcissistic indicators, but they're not determinative. We see an absence of accountability by the presumed speeding, an absence of accountability and a sense of entitlement when he exits the vehicle, rather than asking, my driving license is in the back, may I go and get it, or do you want to get it, it's in my jacket, he just immediately does it. And when she asks, he says, I'm getting my driver's license. He initially complies by being told to walk over to the curbside. And then, of course, when she says to him, take a seat, entirely pleasantly, albeit firmly, he then erupts. His reaction is not one that would be commensurate with someone ordinarily exhibiting emotional empathy. It's not like he's under sustained provocation from the police officer. So either there's something else going on in the background that has resulted in a diminution of his emotional empathy towards this person, or you're dealing with a narcissist who, when being told to do something, immediately erupts with that ignited fury. We would need to need, need to know more about the circumstances to make a determination. But let us assume, for the purpose of this exercise, that we do have other information that confirms that this individual is a narcissist. We have other information that shows a sense of entitlement, a lack of accountability, an absence of emotional empathy, haughty behaviours, maybe some grandiosity, demonstrates various manipulative behaviours, poor boundary recognition, and various aspects of the narcissistic dynamic. So we have determined from those other information he is a narcissist. And fixed with that knowledge, we watch this behaviour. Where would we place him? Well, first of all, we see the fact that he's speeding. All narcissists could engage in that. That's not particularly something that's party to a particular sub-school. The manner in which he exits the vehicle is particularly haughty and could be an upper mid-ranger acting with arrogance and superiority or is more likely the behaviour of a lesser narcissist. When he's told to sit down, this is when we really see, if he is a narcissist, the narcissism in action. There's an immediate heated ignited fury. There's no mid-range attempt to explain his way out of it, doling out a pity play, I'm sorry officer, I've got diarrhoea, I was racing to get to the toilet, or my wife's just gone into labour. Any of those things that might be true or be invented by a mid-range narcissist, there's no attempt to smooth things over by being charming, which you might see with an upper mid-range narcissist or a greater narcissist. And therefore, this sudden eruption means that if this person is a narcissist, we can discount them being mid-range or greater. They simply wouldn't respond in that way. By simply being asked to sit down and erupting with the finger jabbing and the swearing demonstrates considerable ignited fury, which would be commensurate with the behavior of a lesser narcissist. What more do we learn? Well, he could, for instance, be verbally aggressive, but then do as he's told when faced with the threat of arrest, being tasered, etc. But he doesn't. He continues to be difficult and doesn't back down. He's provoked further, of course, when the police officer shoves him. And at that, assuming he's a narcissist, that would be a further threat to control, which his narcissism needs to nullify. A mid-range narcissist would probably collapse to the floor, for instance, middle mid-range being going, ow, ow, my fractured eyelash, and doling out a pity play. Instead, he reacts by grappling. He doesn't immediately go in trying to punch her, which suggests possibly lower lesser isn't applicable here, and he goes more for the grappling with her. But the fact is, there's no facade being operated. He doesn't yell for help, as a mid-ranger might ordinarily do. He just gets on with it, grappling with her, 
until he's brought to the ground by the man in blue who pops up. He continues to use verbal profanity and continues to struggle. The ignited fury is still there. To my mind, he's not up a lesser type A because there's an absence of charm in his responses. Upper less B is a possibility because he could be seen as a bully. But to my mind, if, and it's a big if, if we'd had other information that confirms this individual is a narcissist, based upon what we're seeing here, the most likely outcome for him would be middle lesser. The quality of his vehicle suggests that he's in employment, which would also be associated with middle lesser. He doesn't have the out and out arrogance of an upper lesser type B be saying, Hey, listen to me, little lady. You shouldn't do you know who I am? You shouldn't be bucking me. I know important people. Who do you think you are pulling me over? Instead, it's straight to the I'm not sitting down, the finger jabbing, the swearing, and so forth. The fact that he doesn't start punching her pulls away from lower lesser and that it's more of a grappling type of behaviour, which is seen more with mid-rangers should they use physical violence, to my mind shows an amalgam of both mid-range and lesser. But ultimately, he sits within lesser because of the absence of facade and the heated ignited fury, and he has a very low threshold over that ignited fury control threshold. It erupts immediately. It almost seemingly comes out of nowhere, doesn't it? It's not like you see him getting more and more agitated. He comments a little bit haughtily about the driving license, he marches over to the side, and then, boom, he erupts. So, as stated, we would need more material to determine whether he's a narcissist, but if we had that and we determined that he was, based upon this exchange, the outcome would be middle lesser. Did you get it right in those terms? Let me know in the comments section. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for watching.